Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of From No Crypto to No Crypto. I'm your host, the Crypto Coach, Blockchain Wayne. Today, we're joined by Alan from EVG. Alan, thanks for joining us today. You know, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to, to, to jump in and talk about all the great things you guys are doing at EVG. I've had a chance to peruse the website. But before we jump in that, can you tell everybody a little bit maybe what your role is at EVG and then also um, your background? Like, what got you into this? Yeah, absolutely. So, um I'm the founder and CEO of EVG, um, um, and my background is I, I started as a startup founder um, in Web2, obviously, uh, 13, 14 years ago in college. I was lucky that at the time startup was a buzzword just like Web3 these days. So I managed to sell two companies before my graduations. Um, and then as any kids that made a little bit of money early on, start partying a little bit, not knowing what to do. Um, and I, you know, a couple of fun invited me to join them as venture partner. Um, and I end up joining one of them, a, a big private equity group in Asia, to help them build a venture practice because at the time they want to go early. Um, so I was there for about four years doing nothing related to crypto, uh, mostly deep tech stuff, autonomous driving, uh, biotechs, entertainment, a lot of entertainment stuff. Um, and it was during one of the random trips, uh, somebody phoned me into an ICO deal uh, that later on became Bancor. Um, and and looking back, that might be the first thief I do in the world, to be honest. Um, and, and they raised like $130, $140 million and broke Ethereum. And this is the first time that was like me being aware that, uh, wow, this is something new. Well, a startup could just could just go public in at such an early stage. And all the users and everyone that you know participated could become a stakeholder, right? Uh, unlike traditionally, a venture capital could capture all of it. Um, right. So that kind of like got my attention a little bit. And... One thing leads to another. I was in 20, 30 ICO deals all of a sudden, uh, being a, you know, writing small angel checks. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of them are shit. Some of them are okay, a decent. Um, and then about a year later, I finally, you know, start to have a picture and sense of what the industry is about. So in late 2018, I started UVG in, apartment, in my apartment with two of my very good friends. Um, and, and yeah, and then we, we started as a company and just start building. Um, and fast forward to now with 300 people, a quarter billion assets on the balance sheets. Uh, we've also used a balance sheet assets in over 150 different startups, uh, 100% prop cap. Um, and, uh, but most importantly, what we're really proud of is we are very R and D and product driven shop. So, um, 200 of the 300 employees we have across the business of the three of ours are engineers. Um, so we build every product in house. Um, and, and, you know, that's our way of like loving the industry is trying to, you know, roll your sleeve up, you know, going to the garage and tweaking stuff and building stuff. Right. Um, um, there's something we really like and, and consumer is a big part of it, um, of what we do. Yeah. You know, consumer adoption, I know we'll jump into that soon. That's, that's very important, uh, because we could build all the greatest tech in the world. If we don't make it consumer friendly, uh, you know, we're not really going to get anywhere, but, uh, you know, notice looking at, at all you guys are doing, yeah, it's definitely a lot in the space. I guess one question I have for you, do you feel kind of your background into like before you got into crypto and Web3 tech, um, your background in just traditional tech, do you think that helped you um, kind of stand out in this in this field? Yeah, um, like to be completely honest, it takes a period of time adjusting. <laughs> Um, um, like, you know, I, th I think, I think I was trained as a product manager. So my background is I'm a product manager, um, in my first two startups. Um, so I try to look at things in a very rigor rigorous way, right? You have a funnel, you have where it draws attentions and you have where, you know, throughout a funnel, you lost users and then conversion and then monetization and things like that. And obviously in each part of those funnels, uh, is almost you know, you think very, very differently as a web two builder and web three builder, right? Uh, right. One of the example I always like to use is that being a web two builder, uh, you look, you're you thinking yourself like a farm owner, right? And you think about your user is like pigs or chickens, and you want them to produce as many eggs and just steal the eggs, right? Um, or, 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 you know, once you raise the pig big enough, you want to slaughter them. And um, because you need to get so-called the LTV back um, from them and because you spend the cap on them, right? Um, and I think whether you get a thing of it, it takes a pair of time adjusting to a new model where you actually need to think a lot more about giving back. Um, you, you think, need to think a lot more about, you know, 
why this user creating a certain network value for you and how do we reward them so that they create more you know network value for you and it forms a better flywheel and and you think about wealth effect more right um traditionally you think about hey shareholders board meetings my private market valuation going from series a to series b and marking it up or whatever it might be. And ultimately, if you have 14 years, your IPO and you done with some details, right? Um, <laughs> but ultimately in crypto, you have to think, hey, in order for me to make money, I have to make everyone one else money. I have to make developer money. I have to make user money. I have to make the, the airdrop farmer money. So so it, the game become quite different, I would say. So I think from mentality to a lot of actual experiments. Um, and sometimes I think what sometimes in the Web2 school, a lot of things it taught you um, in Web3, I think it's still probably a little bit too early. We, we, I'm seeing some sign that building a Web3 product is more and more like building a Web3 product. It's getting a lot more fundamentally sound. It's mm -hmm. getting a lot more, the quality product has been, you know, the bar has been raising every single year, right? Um, uh, but still, if you ask me, it's like compared to the product requirement document I use have to wrote in Web2, uh, Web3, I think still is, uh, is, is, is in a different stage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great insight, man. Cause that, that's kind of what I was thinking. And I think towards the end, um, some of your thoughts were, were kind of where my thinking was, is that as we evolve, you're going to have to have more of that web two mentality. That's going to help you because instead of saying, Hey, I'm just going to build a crypto product. It's I'm going to build a great product that would stand alone in web two, but I'm going to enhance it with web three elements. Right. And that's kind of where, where exactly. I think we've got to evolve to, uh, instead of, going crypto first, like, hey, I'm going to build this great crypto product and then we're going to figure out if people want to use it or how they can use it or whatever. It's If, if I built this in Web2 standalone, it would be a good or decent product. And I'm just going to enhance it with this extra tech where um, it provides additional incentives to the user, provides additional incentives to anyone involved, right? And uh, I think that's Absolutely. where we got to Because, I mean, honestly, consumer adoption, I think part of that is when you have people using a technology and they don't even realize it's crypto and web three, um, you know, if they 100%. dug deep enough, they could find it, but all the complexities are just hidden from the user. hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I, I think we're in a very different, interesting stage of the, um, the blockchain evolutions, right? If you look at, I think if you look at even internet, to be fair, it's nothing, it's not just blockchain it has to go through this stage. Internet went through this stage as well. The first stage of internet from 1996, 2003, four, um, you know, during the internet bubble, it's largely also narrative driven, right? Like all those stuff that was trending up there, um, you know, even Amazon back in the day is more narrative than the real business, right? Uh, it's more idea driven. And but obviously after the internet bubble, what you saw is a lot of great product was born. Product manager become a lot more important role. The CEOs becoming, you see a lot more product manager and engineer become CEOs of the company and not just a salesman. Um, and I think you're, you're seeing that embodiment as well in what do as of today. And I think what that represents is really important because every single time when we think about big adoption or big technology, like let's say we talk mobile internet, right? Like, but what does that mean? You don't really think about mobile, mo you don't relate to mobile internet. You relate to it like, oh, the iPhone moment, right? When Steve Jobs came out with that phone and it's like, no stylus, use your hand, right? Um, right. And you think about... It's very hard for you to talk about AI before ChatGPT. ChatGPT is that you know, representations of, you know, AI to many people, to my mom, to my secretary, because it actually solved the problem for them, right? And yeah. I think I tend to think in, in the same way as well. When it comes to consumer adoption, is actually a really easy test, right? Like, uh, is a game? Can your cousin play it, right? Uh, is a social product? Can someone else? Uh, can a creator make? you know, make, make income out of it, right? It is, it's really, really simple test. is nothing complicated. It's not FHG. It's not CK proof. It's not like, you know, we, we don't need all those things, right? Uh, ultimately, I think it's a product that would define whether people see value in that or not. Um, yeah. and, and that's what we also, we, we also love about it. And we think this is an important part of the industry moving forward. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you think, um, you know, the examples you gave of early days of the Internet, um, early days of like even AI. I mean, AI has been around for quite a while. Right. It's just a long GPT. time. Right. Exactly. But most people don't realize that they just think it just came with. Oh, it just exploded with Chat GPT. And uh, I guess the difference in crypto and Web3 is a lot of things have just been built and shared publicly that it's people are seeing that evolution. 
and and it's not like hidden from most people uh you know like the those other two adoption cycles were like uh, because it was really like their interaction was when they got um you know they, they they got to the product they were using the product i mean people don't realize i mean i'm sure there's a lot of ai built into siri on the iphone and people didn't realize they've been using ai for all this time and oh now chat gpt is here oh we can finally use ai <laughs> totally totally yeah before we jump more into uh consumer adoption i definitely love this topic but i want to back up and and talk about evg for for a minute i mean you guys have a um looks like a great umbrella of products that are that are um in your wheelhouse but you just had one recently um you know some developments happened recently an announcement with open social is that right can you tell us a little bit about open social yeah so uh open social was a project that uh really up to ftx uh, finally the market like quiet down and i feel like in the last cycle we kind of like driven by the market and having to trace things and after ftx like you know the all the all the senior partners and management co-founders and us we, we took like a month off and just trying to uh, research about what we should be focusing on, on or what could be the big new thing that for example like last cycle you have invite coming up and really drive the entire consumer market or created that consumer market right and then we're thinking it's like okay what's next right because um you know invite is one absolutely we still have 100 people working on that but you know what could be the next one like and at the time when we look in like patterns of internet, if you think about it, it's like um, games actually exist before show show, right? Games exist. Like Activism Bizarre is founded in like late nineties. Uh, they already had a hit hit many hit titles back in nineties, and that's why a lot of people bought computers. Um, but show show really think about every major social platforms was created from two thousand four to two thousand ten, the second six years. Yeah. Um, largely, I think things with many parameters like user experience, um, like the cost, the marginal cost, and uh, whether you have like initial, you know, sufficient population of people um, and things like that. And so, so which is really interesting. We think like, okay, this might be the next natural thing. So we start basically looking at all the things we in the market that we can possibly look at as a com or as a comparable. Um, and what's looked through it is, it struck us very, very interestingly is that um, how I think a lot of product that came before us, uh, which are all novel and great experiments, um, I'm mostly 99%, you know, Western teams. And the way to think about social is al almost very, very different from the way Asian think about social. Um, so at the time we feel like, Hey, this is not, you know, we, we respect all the trial, but that's not the problem we want to solve. And that's not the, you know, the exact same mission we want to have. Um, so, so at the time we decided to set out to build open social protocol. And then at the same time we were like, Hey, we don't want to be, pure like infra play that just builds things and run a hundred hackathon and praying that someone will come build this um, and, and maybe make us hot, right? At the time it's like, hey, we're building things to solve, solve certain problem, creating certain products, certain experience. And, and the lucky thing is EBJ has a lot of, you know, building capacity. So why don't we just compose a couple of depth on top to kind of showcase and try to experiment and what we can build. So we start our king making program. We start building multiple Dapps internally as well. So at the same time, it's almost like a design partnership between Open Source Protocol and the Dapp team. They're getting back and forth and back and forth. Um, so so it's, it's very interesting, you know, processes we build it. And now we build most of the modules. We're thinking about how can we benefit most of people possible. And even to the extent that how can we enable non-developer, non-engineer people to deploy the community Dapps or a community economy without any coding, just almost like Wix.com. Right. Or just like back in the day, how we create bulletin board forums or things like that, or subreddit. Right. Um, yeah. So so those are the things we're thinking along the line. And that's why we decided and when we think this could be really, really big, we think this could be the biggest consumer you know, use cases for this cycle. Um, and that's why we decided to make this uh, of the flagship product of the group. And, and I'm leading part of my class. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited to check it out once I learn more about it. It's uh Definitely, I think there's a pain needed. I mean, most of us that use social platforms today, a lot of a lot of people when you talk to, they're just they're not happy with them. They just use it because it's 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 what's out there and it's what most people are using, right? When you think about those social platforms, but everybody's had a level of frustration with um, whether it's censorship or whether it's you know I don't even have the app open and I'm talking about something uh, to to someone in person, and then when I open up the app. 
there's an ad for whatever I was just talking about. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, a lot of those, those invasions of privacy with people, we still continue to use it because that's where people are. I think that's the hardest part about building these social networks is uh, social platforms is um, attracting the users. You know, I always tell people, I, I think I look at, look at the web to social, social media evolution. Like I felt like I loved um, MySpace more than Facebook, but everybody migrated to Facebook and it's like, Man, we like we, we were able to put songs on our profile and uh, you know rank your top ten friends back in the day. And uh, but I'm I'm curious to see um, what are some of you mentioned major dif- there's differences in the way Westerners socialize and uh, the way you do you know like in Asia. So what what are some of those differences? Yeah, so I think number one like um, in Asia we, we don't think about from a more you know, summa level or philosophical level we don't think about social as a it's social media or right. social network or just a platform or an app. That's not the first thing we think about. We think about social as a layer. We think like social is embedded into different things. Uh, social is embedded to gaming. Social is embedded to transactions. And, and there's many examples of that. For example, I like, think about that the biggest gaming company in the world is Tencent. Uh, and Tencent's core, the core of its success or, or, or the, really the recipe is WeChat, which is a social product. Right. Yeah. Um, and and in Asia, like also, if you look at WeChat, WeChat is also using social for payments. Right. Everyone pays with their with their WeChat accounts. So we think about like the biggest, like the Robin Hood equivalent of Asia is a company called Futu, Futu, uh, which is also incubated by Tencent, but is actually almost like a Wall Street bet combined it with a trading engine. Um, it's, it'll be like a pump up hunt with a trading engine, right? So, so the funny thing to think about is like the reason you're in Futu in that Robinhood, actually they, their fees are a lot higher than Robinhood. They actually don't send their flows to, you know, Ken Griffin and stuff like that. What they really do is they charge pretty high. But the reason people still in the app is because Tesla has 4 million followers within the app. Um, top analysts can make a living within it. Um, and then you get to also, there's a lot of UGC content. You can follow other people who break down different st- stocks, almost like speaking out them. So the way thing about like social is like social can be combined with many different use cases. Um, and it's many, many small vertical and, um, and each of the clusters, right? So for example, I use an app called Vivino, which is for wine. If you like wine, you probably have used with the window before for scanning, but most importantly, look at other people's review, other people's like rating and the for profiles and things like that in comparisons. You write, you write and share your note there as well. Um, so it's just not just the database, right? So, so those are the things that we think about social. When we think about it, it's like in Asia, there's so many verticalized ones, and and also a lot more people is making the livelihood on social, right? In but to social as well. But you think about TikTok. TikTok came out from from this part of the world as well. And Rico is the first product that where there's a lot of people are full-time streamers as an income, as an entrepreneur, as a builder, right? Um, and when we kind of start building our open show show, one of the examples at the time that a new piece of news that jumped on us was really, really interesting is uh, is the founder of Wall Street Bank, right? They got kicked out from by Reddit. Yeah. Um, and the core rooted the IP to Reddit and not the dumb. And then obviously came out and say, hey, you know what, like for you know, all this 12, 13 years, for all the Robin Hood ads that have ever put onto the community, we've never received a dollar of revenue shares. We don't have shares of Reddit. Um, they shut us down during GameStop days and we basically control nothing. But you think about community builder, we think about community builder as entrepreneurs, right? So the key is just like you said, like you have your MySpace, you, you, you basically compose on top of it. You compose your friend list, you compose your music, it comes different background and stuff like that. Um, so the way we look at that is if it's not, if it's not your social graph, it's not your community. So, so almost like if it's not your key, it's not your yeah. asset, right? So, yeah. so that's why I think our vision is that we are not interested to recreate an inferior version of Twitter or a Twitter clone again, because many has tried. Everybody has failed, right? Yeah. Um, sure. and the last guy that tried uh, is a company that has a hundred billion dollar balance sheets called Facebook, right? And a few billion users, and they still failed in threat, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so ultimately, I think you know, creating a viral vir- version of Twitter and just simply issue a token wrapper is not interesting, right? Like, what we really want to solve is how do we help creators, a seventeen year old kid in Cincinnati or in Vietnam, 
Um, if he runs the best, let's say, you know, runs the best Kendall Jenner community in the world with 50,000 people, he will be able to make 10, 20, $30,000 from subscriptions, from uh, gifting, from issuing a meme coin, from, you know, adding a bunch of stuff on top. And it could be a full-time job and become a studio, right? And that's where we are going to, you know, is really how can we empower 10,000 community dApps that becomes 10,000 commu community economies. And they might be small economies, right? Each one might be, them might be small. There could be a thousand people, there could be 10,000 people. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It means something for them in that people who love that culture, who love football, who love Japanese animate. Um, and yeah. that's all this about, right? So, so that's why we're not trying to fight Facebook with Facebook or fight Twitter with Twitter. And I think anyone in Web3 that's trying to fight Web2 with Web2, 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 you're probably gonna lose. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I know some people that have done that. They've launched some social media platforms and the UI was better than what you've seen in traditional, you know, and it, it was, but it, it's to get the people there. But it, it makes sense because um, instead of leading with, hey, this is a giant social platform, come to us, uh, you know, find the community you're in. So like you were talking about, like the games that have a social element, uh, that Vino app to where you have social elements to it, right? Giving um people creating a community around that you're definitely right i mean i never thought about it like the way you said it uh it's similar to to crypto not your keys not your crypto but yeah i've got a friend group and we run a couple of facebook groups that have hundreds of thousands of members in each one and exactly. we could get shut down tomorrow i mean we've already been censored quite a bit because one of them's very crypto focused and uh you know they, they've got it turned on now to where we can't allow anybody to post unless we approve the post so it's like it's like one step away from saying hey that everything that we built there could be gone uh you know with one 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 uh admin at facebook that doesn't like what's happening <laughs> exactly and and most important to look at that i think that's the most um almost the most the biggest problem we want to tackle yeah. is that if you think about today's platform all today's platforms made up of hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of, you know, content farms, uh, interest groups, right? Subreddits, right? There's like, when Reddit IPO early this year, it's like $10 million market cap. Um, there's probably about 30, 50,000 active subreddits. That means the entire market cap of 10 million is made together by this, made possible by this 50,000 active subreddits. So each of them is like a small cluster or small communities. And, um, and none of them has any, revenue any control and they don't have any ownerships of the user data or like what kind of what in what way they want to moderate it um then obviously they don't have no equity upsize or a capital upsize right and and i think that's the part that you know we really think about what they should really solve because it's all about ownership right the, the, how do we help people to quickly launch own or monetize uh your own community and honestly coming from hong kong I, i've seen a couple of you know a few hong kong entrepreneurs that that they got lucky, for example, like uh, Ray Chan, who was a friend of mine, uh, a brother, and he he could have created this content farm called Nightgap back in the days on Facebook, which later on become one of the biggest meme you know page and stuff like that. And he got VC funding, so he, he was lucky enough to really embrace the root of just pivoting it out and becoming a real business, right? Uh, you, you know, another friend of mine is, is you know Harry Steppen, right? Like he started with a podcast called Twenty VC, and he now turned into a business. And then, or like Kevin Ma, who started Hypebeast back in the days as just a random, almost like a MySpace page, just rating sneakers and stuff like that. And today become a, you know, e-commerce platform, the world's biggest streetwear platform. But those are the really rare few. Those are the people who got lucky. There's a VC knocking on the door and saying, you know what, let me back you. You should think business. And they're commercial savvy. They have engineers at their disposal. They're able to do that, right? We think about most of the content creator and the content farm owners, uh, they might not have the same resources, right? And I think that's where a technology piece should come in to enable the underdogs, the long tails, the little guys to create a shops. And and so that's why one of the examples I like to use internally when I you know preach or talk to a new employees or, or a new engineer is that you need to think about sh like almost like Shopify. I think about our mission is almost like Shopify, um, but not in e-commerce, but in social. Because Shopify enable and break out those small merchants from uh, from Amazon, because in Amazon, you're, you're locked in. You have no control. You cannot compose your UI. You cannot compose, decide which uh, inventory system one you, you want to use, which logistic you want to use, which payment gateway you want to use, which ad engine you want to use. Everything's boxed in there. Um, and you're controlled by the algorithm there. But Shopify gives millions of merchants and 
a choice and composability to really say, you know what, just by drag and drop, clicking, you know, clicking and choosing and putting a credit card there, I can launch my own shop in the format and, in, you know, in this monster that in my head that in a way that I want to serve my target audience. And so you're giving people out, giving them that the liberty and composability. Um, and almost without coding, you don't have to raise $3 million VC dollars and set up an engineering team to do it. And that's what we look at Open Show Show is like, how do we help these people to make an income to own and to launch their things economically? And, and that is the interesting tell that we want to serve. Yeah. And so basically what you're saying is they don't have to understand how to code because they can, there's a modular build that they can do within there as well too. Yeah, so OpenShift is launching. We have, we, we're taking a very barbell approach when it comes to go to market. Um, on what's that barbell? We have the internal studio that is building internal dev team, about 60 people that's building uh, three different products um, in partnership with three major different chains, right? The first one is called Social Monster, Somon, S-O-M-O-N. Um, it's currently already 5 6% the total transaction of every day in, in base is definitely the most successful social graph in uh, social fight up in base and by on chain DAUs. Um, and then and 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 probably one of the top one in terms of consumer matrix as well. Um, and then we're launching another one very soon with another very big chain. Um, we're gonna announce very soon. Um, it's also venture backed already by, by all the exchanges, and there's a third one that's coming out announcing very, very soon. So on one side, we go very deep to create unique experiences that we think that Web2 don't have or it could, cannot be achieved in Web2. Um, and on the other side, we're launching in September our uh, what we call the user-generated portal, the official open source portal. We're opening that for people. So anyone will be able to go up, and you can choose technically like, Hey, uh, you can choose the template for, right? For example, does it look like a MySpace, or does it look like uh, an OnlyFans, <laughs> or does it look like a, a forum? And once you choose that, you can choose different type of themes. You can customize it, drag and drop, blah blah blah. You can, then you can choose which chain you want to deploy it on, because we in Open Source Protocol we are multi chain, so we support multiple different chains. And we will also be launching our Solana SBM version in September. So you can choose which chain you want to be on. You can choose. Do you want to you know, subsidize guest fee or not, right? And then everything, all the backend logics like SPT, your social graph, your data modules, your DA, um, your monetization layers, your plugin toolings is all preset. And then once you start running it to a certain level number, then you can choose like, hey, if you, let's say you talk about sports, it's a sport related tribe, you talk about Olympics, then you can choose like, hey, maybe I want to add this prediction market plugin. And so, but the experience is almost like Google Chrome extension. You can simply add it to it and people can start already betting through that on-chain contract. Um, or if you're a KOL, you can use um, uh, almost the subscription plugin, right? And then, or if you're a community talking about crypto, you can maybe even launch your own meme plans, right? Um, so that's where we're thinking about the experience is within five minutes, you're able to launch your own, regardless of your individual, are you a DAO, are you a build? Uh, or are you just an interest group that's interested in why or Japanese any? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Alan, as, as we start to wrap up, man, and I, and I uh, it's been a great conversation, man. It sounds like hey, you're definitely passionate about open social. I can't wait to, to, to experience it and, and see all the things that you guys offer there. But back to the, the consumer adoption piece, like what, what, what are some things that, that, I guess not just with open social, but in others too, like what have you guys done to um, kind of improve that user experience? That's one of the things that I think a lot of people need to focus on in terms of the, the crypto web three world. I'm sure it's been a topic for you guys as well. Yeah. Um, I do think that honestly, like the infrastructure improvement in the, especially in the last 18 months has been really helpful to um, consumer bidders, right? Um, I believe that in the next year or so, actually, I think you're seeing the pattern now. A um, lot more consumer startups in Web3 is going to successfully raise funds. They're going to successfully get listed. Because if you think about it, it's like AA Wallet only really, really just official debut and came out Q1 last year, right? After FTX. It was not that long ago. But the adoption was already like, you know, I've never seen that curve adoption in any of the piece of technology in crypto um, because it simply provides a very similar experience. You log in with your social, whatever your choice account, and you don't, there's no SIF phrase, there are different things. There's Paymaster that aggregates, aggregates gas and transactions and make it more efficient. And obviously the L2s and L3s, they really has reduced the gas fee by far, right? 
So, so almost the first time I open in a first step called social monster, we decide to basically seed user with when you create your login with your Twitter, you will see one dollar worth of uh, the get guest fee uh, credits, which we give to every single new users, right? right. Um, and with one dollar, you can already try your first fifty hundred transaction without having to think about how to assign something. Do I switch or not? Right. So by the time you get into it, for your first first fifty times, you you do not even realize, right? And then you was like, hey, I'm already building a habit. I like this. Maybe I should just transfer asset. Maybe I should top up more. Maybe I should do certain things with it. And I think look at all that is only enabled because the better infrastructure that's really rolled out in the last period of time. I think Vitalik has this grand plan, and and I think he's executing beautifully and really pushing through. You know this kind of agendas, and now it's become the industry standard for things for 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 different ecosystems. Um, if you look at Solana, when, when you know I, I like the playing initiative a lot as well, right? I hope more developers are going to enjoy it. Um, and I think things like that is really going to dramatically improve user experience. And it's not limited to big developer like us or a smaller development house a garage team. Uh, you know, it's it's the same level playing field that I think everyone will start seeing, and the standard got pushed up much much higher. Um, I remember when, when in the last cycle, in the tail end of the last cycle, one of my friend Jerry, who found a step in um, the running app, uh, they yeah. moved to Earn app. When they came out, everyone was like, "Wow, this is such a beautiful user experience!" and and I was amazed with that building wallet and different things. Wow, this is so much easier, right? Um, and now this become a standard almost for every single product, right? So I think it tells you how much user experience has really progressed. Um, and and there's a lot more I think we can look forward to, um, um, you know, moving forward as well. Yeah, that's great. And I think that's what we need. I mean, we've seen some great tech built, um, but just everybody like the space evolving to where that user experience is easy. Because I know, man, like if we think back to years ago, it was, you know, the reason that we haven't had much more user adoption than we have is because it's complicated. It's scary. Um, just in sending, I remember the first time I went to send Bitcoin, I was like, holy crap, what is this? <laughs> you know, and then, and then I get scared to death when, you know, well, even prior to that, setting up the wallet, it's right. Okay. If I lose this, this, this set of words or somebody else gets a hold of it, I lose everything. It could be scary. And there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that have been built and alternatives and, uh, simplify that process. Cause that's why I always say, I mean, that's, if, if it gets to where like my mom and my dad could use it, then, Hey, we're, uh, exactly. we're getting started. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's a collective effort. It's not just, I think a lot of people will say, Hey, this is the, you know, this, oh, we have, you know, it, it sucks because the, uh, the pilot manager is not good enough. But I always think, you know, it's also the infra side as well. There's a lot of time when I think a lot of good piece of infra project got funded or it really came out. They've never built a, you know, consumer facing product before. So they're really like, they're great nerds and geeks and, you know, scientists and engineers and PhDs, but they're sitting in their garage thinking that, oh my God, this FHG thing is going to, this intent thing is going to change the world. But then really didn't think about like, who's going to use it? Well, in what way they're going to use it? You know, what kind of problem you solve for those type of present? And, and, and very much like you said, your mom and dad, like one of the, my worst experience back in the day is like, uh, when, when, when I'm really not at home and my mom sometimes would trade stocks with my computer, like laptop desktop back in the days in early 2000s and and if the computer freeze she would call me and it's like you should freak out she's like how do i fix the computer and the worst thing you can possibly do is teaching your mom how to fix the computer over a telephone and now yeah. she does everything on her phone like like stuff like i was like damn like how are you using this app right i don't even know you have this app <laughs> <laughs> so i think i think that's a progressions that was enabled have to be enabled both by infra providers and also just we need to see also more consumer startups or consumer builders um, getting funded by BZ, getting valued by BZ, getting you know, attention from the space. Then, then you have more resources to really craft something that's good, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and more projects and protocols. So, like, like what we do at FIO is we focus on uh, building a layer that hides the complexities of a wallet from a user. And and there's there's other people that are building protocols that hide that. Um, they give people different ways to secure their private keys than just having the right of seed phrase down. Uh, so I think a lot of those those things that, that are just people that are building layers on top to mask that just same as the Internet, right? <laughs> the Internet got uh, accelerated in mass adoption when when we saw uh, a lot of these protocol layers built that just simplified the user process, hid the complexities in the background 
uh, you know, like Windows and, and Mac OS. So, uh, man, it's, it's been a pleasure talking today. Uh, before we do wrap up, can you uh, share with everybody where they can find out more about EVG and follow along with all the projects that you guys have under your umbrella and all the companies you're building? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, um, you can follow our official um, um, Twitter. I still like to call it Twitter. You know, <laughs> X um, <Yeah. laughs> is at EVG HQ. Um, and then um, also you can follow Open Social Protocol. That's one of our special products. There's a lot of exciting things being and now then we'll like obviously feedback from all the community and users. Um, yeah. And then, and then probably say also EVG has a lot of different, we do like 60 something event and conference a year. We organize them with, we, we also own a media firm. We own, uh, we also own a conferencing brand as well. Um, there's a lot of different parties we host with different communities. Um, so, you know, uh, also feel free to just sign up for one of those and come to, especially in the second half, there's so many things happening, happening in Asia. If you or your audience, you know, anyone that's been in Asia, feel free to reach out and feel free to come to one of my parties. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. But spending quite a, quite a bit of time in Asia and I still need to get out to Hong Kong and some other places. So I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. absolutely. Awesome. Well, it's been you, a pleasure sir. having you. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alan. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will catch you on the next episode. Take care, everybody.